And we're talking a lot today, we've been talking a lot about what we do with each other here as we get into the Word of God here today. And we were talking about leadership and the roles of people in the church. And what does it mean to be a leader? Of course, as you know, we are moving through those indicators that our conference gives us of a, of a healthy church, right? Empowering servant leaders. We talked a little bit about that. Well, walking hand in hand with that is the gifting of the Holy Spirit. Because as we talked about, you know, I always said that as a, as a teacher coming up through, and I've done a lot of leadership training for young people and all of those things, and one thing that I will not teach them is that everybody is supposed to be a leader in the same definition that the, that the world has for leader. Out in front with the communication and the, all the seven steps of great leadership and this and that. That is such a very narrow definition of what we would expect from people. So I didn't. I couldn't. Because you're setting a lot of people up for failure when you provide, you know, Covey's seven high, uh, effective habits, uh, highly effective habits of great leaders and all of that. And then the person can't do it. But what we talked about last week was the fact that each and every one of us in the way that we were created, leads in our own context in some way, shape, or form. That part of our Christian testimony, we can never escape. We see it in the faithfulness of a family that goes through trials. I could point to nearly everybody in here. That's Christian leadership. We see it, and I've spoken about it, in the music. We see it in the gifts of hospitality and event planning that some folks have. I could go down and on and on and on, and I could probably point to every individual and talk about the individual talents and gifts that you bring to the body in leadership. You say, well, it's not leadership, that's servantship. It's the same thing. As we lead, we serve. And people who can't do what you do look at what you're doing and they say, wow, that person is doing what they're gifted to do. What a leader. It's an interwoven cycle. And so I want to continue to encourage you. If you think your little gift is small, don't. It's probably a niche that you can do and not too many other people do it. And so when you do it, lots of other people are going to look around and say, man, I can't do that. What a leader that person is. <clears throat> so leading in our giftedness or re-gifting is the, you know, I came up with that idea. This is re-gifting. Isn't that the modern, isn't that what we do now? Isn't that the term, right? The Christmas term, we re-gift? That kind of has a semi-negative connotation, but in a sense, the straight term re-gifting is what we are meant to do. And we're going to read that in the Word this morning. We don't receive it so I can stand up here and say, this is Brian, this is my gift. Look what I got. Look what I got for Christmas. Right? Jesus loves you, but I'm his favorite. Look at this. You don't do that. You get, you receive for the sole purpose of giving. You're a funnel. You're a funnel. And we're gonna and why is, is another big reason. Because the, there's lots of scripture about the Spirit, Holy Spirit being inspired which we talked about being in the Spirit. Lots of scriptures about specific gifts and leadership. The one that we read from 1 Peter this morning gets into, and we're going to refer back to that, because the core of the message this morning is in that. But let's look at Ephesians. We have that first. Ephesians 4. I'm in the New International Version, which is your pew Bible. <laughs> but it's right there, as long as it stays upright. 
you shouldn't have any problem with it. If I see everybody doing what Matt's doing now, then I'll know that the devil's back. And we will throw something at the projector and chase him out. So listen now. See if you can hear a theme in this teaching about leadership and giftedness. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service. So that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and to become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching, and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of Him who is the head, that is, Christ. From Him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love. Where did we already hear that this morning? Grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. That's a powerful scripture about the body of Christ. We'll pick that apart just a little bit. Because we see that not only did Christ, does Christ provide all of this, but from the onset, He does not provide it to you so you can show off. We go back to the beginning of that scripture, Justice, and we see that He provides it for very specific purposes. To provide for what? The strength of the body of Christ. The unity of the body of Christ. And the growth and matureness of the body of Christ. There's nothing said, even, you know, I say even, and even in the beginning of that scripture when he talks about Christ himself gave the apostles and the prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. So folks like me with that particular gifting are, are, were called to teach you about it. That's nothing special. If I refuse to do so, or I choose to go off the path of the Word of God, He will dismiss me, and He will find a heart that is submitted that will teach the Word of God. It's not about me. so that the body of Christ may be built up until we reach unity in the faith, knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature, attaining the full measure, the fullness of Christ. That's important. That's important. So not only are the gifts not just for you, so that you can show off, Not only are they for the body of Christ so that the body of Christ now can show off. Look at Churchtown. We're spirit-filled. We do all of this stuff in the name of Christ. It's not even about that. There's another level. He teaches us. He unifies us. He matures us. Why? The simple reason that we can be saved Because the constant barrage of lies, the constant barrage of false teaching, the constant barrage of very attractive ideas and philosophies and self-help solutions and anything that you can possibly imagine that would distract you from the saving grace of Christ. The way, the truth, and the life of Jesus. He builds us all up so that we are capable of living in the Word of God. 
So it's not even about look at us. And we can see, and I'm not going to belabor this point, but we can see individuals in our culture, whether they profess to be Christian teachers or not, who have made it all about them. Look at me. Worldwide internet teacher, preacher. Look at me. I am the way and the truth. I've got the key to all knowledge. I, 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 I. We see individuals that do that. We see churches that do that. Look at this church. Look at us. We're doing this. We've got a thousand different programs that serve a thousand different people. Look at us. The simple message, and we've always taught that here at Churchtown, all of those things, those things all of those service, pro, all that ministry may very well happen, but it will happen as a fruit of the Spirit of God. Right? He, built, he gives us gifts so that we can love God better through Jesus Christ, so that we've heard it twice already today, love each other better. And then as we grow together, we can love the world. And we can show this world that there's a better way. There's a better way. And that's the simple message. Everything else, if it's authentic, all the ministries, you know, like I said, if I'm meant to preach in front of 50 or 5,000, all of that will happen as a result of our submission to Christ. We don't put that out there first and then say, look, Jesus, look at what we're doing. He'll take care of the people. Churches need to focus on Jesus, not people. Let's look at this from 1 Corinthians. Because now everything that we read from the Word of God and we look in is going to support. Look for what I looked for. Look for the underlying message. Remember in Ephesians, um, when he talked about the ligaments joined together, joined and held together by supporting ligaments grows and builds itself up. Listen for the ligaments that we're talking about today. The reasons why we're given all of these gifts. We have 1 Corinthians here. It says, and you know this one, uh, different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them, in every one, it is the same God at work. <clears throat> Here's the ligament. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here's the ligament. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Simple. Often overlooked. But that's the ligament, right? That's, that's not the flashy stuff about the Spirit and all of that. But they're very, he says, so each one of you who has submitted your heart to Jesus has received the Holy Spirit and your giftings are brought now to the forefront of your lives. I want you to live in your giftings for the common good. Not, I'm sorry, not for you. Not even just for us as defined by the church town body of Christ, but for the common good so that the world itself can have a shot at salvation. For God so loved the world. He didn't just love you. He didn't just love church town. God so loved the world. He's desperate for every heart that will receive him to receive him. That's the common good. So wherever you go, whatever you do, what did Peter teach us? However you speak, however you behave, whenever, in the line at the supermarket, in front of your children having a conversation, at work, at play, wherever, you are influencing somebody 
Because if your heart is submitted to Jesus, then Jesus is in that line at the supermarket, and Jesus is at work, and Jesus is speaking to your children. Final thing, I just want to read First Peter again. And this sounds, if you, I was listening, I, I, First Peter, I went back to Matthew 24. I went back to Matthew 24, and Matthew 24 is when Jesus talks about the end times talks about the great falling away of the church, talks about people uh, being distracted by every new doctrine that comes down the pike, every new form of spirituality, every new all-encompassing, beautiful-sounding, wonderful ideology. Oh, I can totally get on board with that. That sounds so fantastic. So if, I would cross-reference if you want to look at Matthew 24 especially the second half of it, when you read this first Peter scripture, the Word of God is like an intricately woven piece of cloth. There isn't any scripture that doesn't fit in with any other. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and sober of mind so that you may pray above all. Love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Great gritty. If that weren't true, I couldn't be your pastor. You would have rejected me and thrown me out years ago. And we would reject each other and cast each other out of our lives. Because as we live in our human relationships, it's not a matter of whether we're going to hurt each other. It's a matter of what we do next. That's where Jesus, that's the Holy Spirit binding us. Love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received. Yeah, I get to use it to make money, to show off, to fill churches, uh, to serve others. Okay. as faithful, faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Anyone, not talking to preachers here, if anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. Not just preachers here, but if anyone serves, they should do so with the strength that God provides the power of the Holy Spirit. So that in all things that you do, not just singing in church, all things that you do, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is there. To Him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. If you want one of the easiest tests, you know, Scripture tells us to take teaching and hold it up against the Word of God and make sure that it is faithful to the Word of God. One of the easy eyeball tests that you can do for any teaching or any person or anybody that's out in front of any other group, when you hear them speak, when you hear them teach, when you listen, are the arrows pointing to them or are the arrows pointing to God? That's the quick eyeball test. Do they want your attention? Or are they trying, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to direct your attention to something greater, something that will actually serve you? So when you hear teachings and those sorts of things like Scripture talks about, that's the quick rule of thumb. That's the quick eyeball test. Where are the arrows pointing? Here or there? And you know, you know in your spirit. You know. Ask Jesus. He'll tell you. Why do you think you're in a relationship with Him? He's your teacher. The Holy Spirit's the counselor, the teacher, the mediator. Ask Him. So we see that gift empowered 
servant leadership is just that. And it doesn't, it begins and ends with our submission to Jesus Christ. Period. It doesn't focus on people. It doesn't focus on preachers. It doesn't focus on anything but the worship of Christ and the recognition of what He did on the cross for you so that you can be in a relationship with God. That's it. Everything else that God wants from this church will be a result of our relationship with Him. Everything else that God wants from you in this church and outside will be a result of your relationship with Him. Don't put your service first, but Christ first. 